Okay, in today's video, I'm going to be going over synthesis reactions. Synthesis reactions are when you have two or more substances react, chemically bond, to form a single new substance. And that's the key to identifying a synthesis reaction. You have a single product on the right-hand side of your chemical equation. A and B on the left-hand side, on the reactant side, could either be an element or a compound. But on the right-hand side, for a synthesis reaction, for your products, you're always going to have a single compound, okay, or a single thing on the right-hand side. All right, so there's kind of three different kinds or three different kinds of synthesis reactions. You can have two elements, such as carbon and oxygen combining to form carbon dioxide. You can have two compounds uh, reacting to form a single compound. Here we have calcium oxide and water to produce a single compound, calcium hydroxide. And the final one, you have a compound and element. So we have carbon monoxide and oxygen gas reacting to produce carbon dioxide. The one thing that all three of these reactions have in, have in common is that they have a single product on the right-hand side of the chemical equation. Okay? And that product is always going to be a compound. All right. Let's go through and see if we can look at a few simple ones and see if we can complete the reaction. I think for simple synthesis reactions, you should be able to complete the chemical reaction. So here we have a synthesis reaction between iron and oxygen, and we know that our single product is going to be a compound, and that compound is going to contain both iron and oxygen. Okay, now we have iron. In this case, it's going to have a plus 3 charge. Oxygen has a minus 2 charge, so we know it's going to be Fe. 2, O, 3, using the crossover rule to determine the ratio of iron to oxygen in our ionic substance there, and that is simply rust or iron oxide. Now let's go through and see if we can balance that chemical equation. We know we have two oxygens over here and three on the right-hand side, so we're going to need to put a three here, and then we're going to need to put a two here. That'll give us six oxygens on, both, on each side of the equation, and then we have four irons, so we're going to have a four here in front of the iron. Okay, I think that's balanced like that. Okay, now we have silver metal reacting with chlorine gas, and we know that we're going to have a single compound on the right-hand side, and that compound is going to be silver chloride. And we can see we have silver forms a plus one charge. It's one of the transition metals with a uh, single charge is plus one. Chlorine forms a minus one charge, so we have a one-to-one -one ratio of silver to chloride in our single compound there. Now we have two chlorines on the right, excuse me, on the left here. It means we have to put a two here for our coefficients. We'll have two chlorines. Well, if we do that, now we have two silvers, so we know we're going to have to put a two here for our coefficient in front of silver, and that equation is balanced like that. All right, now let's go through and do the next one. We have oxygen gas reacting with magnesium, and before we figure out what the product is going to be, and uh, balance that chemical equation, I'm going to uh, show you the synthesis reaction between magnesium metal and oxygen. So let's go and do that. Okay, as you can see here, I have a piece of magnesium ribbon. It's pure magnesium metal. I'm gonna add a little energy to the ribbon from my Bunsen burner, and then you'll see the synthesis reaction between magnesium and oxygen gas. The reaction will continue until all of the magnesium has used, been used up. And that what remains is the product of that reaction. And the product of that reaction is simply magnesium oxide. And you can see that basically it's just kind of a white powder. Okay, that worked out well. We had a nice bright white color. That's a very characteristic color of that reaction. And we have the synthesis reaction between magnesium and oxygen. We know we're going to have... M, G, O. We know magnesium from our periodic table forms a plus two charge. Oxygen forms a minus two charge, and therefore the ratio of magnesium to oxygen is going to be one to one. We have two oxygens on our reactant side, which means we have to have two oxygens on our product side. We put a coefficient of two. And now we have two magnesium, so now we're going to put a coefficient of two in front of the magnesium, and that equation is balanced like that. Okay, the last one is a synthesis reaction between zinc, metal, and sulfur. And once again, before we go through and figure out what the product is going to be and balance that chemical equation, I'm going to show you the synthesis reaction between uh, zinc, metal, and sulfur. So let's go do that, and then we'll come back. 
Okay, for our second synthesis reaction, I have placed five grams of zinc and two and a half grams of sulfur powder, zinc powder and sulfur powder in the bottom of a aluminum can. I'm gonna add a little energy to that once again for my Bunsen burner, and let's see what happens when we have a synthesis reaction between zinc and sulfur. Okay, there you go. You can see we had an exothermic reaction coming from energy being released due to the formation of bonds between zinc and sulfur, and the product of that reaction is zinc sulfide. Okay, you can see that was quite a vigorous uh, exothermic reaction. We know that when we, balance, when we do the synthesis reaction, we're going to have a single product on the left-hand side, and that product is going to be a compound. It's going to be a compound which consists of zinc and sulfur. And zinc forms a plus two charge, it's a transition metal. Sulfur forms a minus two charge, so we have, we have a ratio of one to one. And I think that equation is balanced just like that. So we have zinc metal reacting with sulfur to produce zinc sulfide, okay? So I think that's the basics of uh, synthesis reactions. They're pretty easy to identify. Usually they're going to be exothermic reactions because we're making chemical bonds and releasing energy. But all of them have a single thing a single compound on the right-hand side for the product. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that was helpful, and um, see you later.